Good morning, folks. We've got solar explosions and earthquakes to discuss. But first, let's take a step back to the morning news from February 7th, just two days ago. Here's what you saw and heard. If you're following us on Twitter, you know that the OLR situation is kind of scary in the southwest Pacific and up towards the equatorial islands. Last night's alert for the region should probably extend to include the Solomon Islands and perhaps even over to PNG. Solomon Islands to PNG, that's Papua New Guinea. And how about we take one right in between those two? USGS has it listed at magnitude 6.4, but this is likely a non-righteous downgrade after both primary readings from Info and the Pacific Tsunami Warning Center both were higher along with many of the human and computer readings on the list. Looking at the updated OLR from last night shows why no new forecast was offered on Twitter. It's just that same West Pacific Island region where the strongest anomalies can be found. Some weather has them building to the east across the water in the north as well, but not like the area that actually took the quake. Also, please note a somewhat ridiculous swarm of mid-range tremors on the Mid-Atlantic Ridge and also a very rare location rumble way north between Canada and Greenland. Let's transition to spaceweathernews.com. Check out these solar eruptions. A number of filaments destabilized last night from the northeastern quadrant to the western limb. None of the eruptions appear to be Earth-directed, but they clearly present significant heliospheric disruptions as can be seen on Soho Lasco coronagraphs there. Despite the filaments releasing, the Earth-facing quiet effect has kept them away from our trajectory, along with the solar flaring remaining ultra-low on the disk. Looking at the sunspots, we can see that they're not entirely pitiful in magnetic character, just in their X-ray output. Departing spots still delta in the south as those two groups begin departing on the right. The incoming group up north to the left is now beginning to declare Delta Canada C in the center of it between the largest umbras of the active region. Solar wind has calmed considerably from yesterday's trend upward. The halt to intensification brought stability and a measure of calm to the Earth system. In the news today, we see Dr. Phillips' cosmic ray update continuing to demonstrate the increase of those cosmic rays here at Earth, up 10% in just one year. It's probably more than sunspot-driven, screaming magnetosphere. We also have an interesting article out about how quakes can trigger others nearby, an update to a prediction system that has existed since the 80s, whereby nearby faults can be triggered by an initial tremor. Lastly, we've got the U.S. temperatures from January here from NOAA, flip-flop from winter expectations and a mild start to 2016 for those who managed to avoid the tornadoes. Website members, there are some new videos in Yelverton's lab for you to see. We are testing Tesla's hairpin circuit and relating back to our previous studies with electric terraforming. Check them out. We've got pressure and radar forecast followed by shots of our star to close. It's 6.05 a.m. Eastern Time and that's the news. Eyes open, no fear. Be safe everyone.